Um, I'm excited to have a couple minutes to uh, share some insights and analysis from the data that we collected a couple months back in Kenya. Uh, before I jump into the data page that we've been putting together over the past couple of weeks, I'm going to quickly touch upon uh, the data philosophy that we have as part of the Spinnaker project. Um, in many ways, uh, the concept behind Spinnaker is similar to the concept behind uh, the original Sears catalog. The original Sears catalog was meant to showcase and share information on the latest and most cutting edge uh, household products. Spinnaker is, more, is focused not on household products, but financial products, and specifically uh, saving products that are available and targeting the poor. Um, and one of, as many as Billy Jack was mentioning, one of the uh, contexts and landscapes that we were really interested in pursuing and capturing was uh, Kenya. So without further ado, I'm going to jump into um, the data page. That looks like, ah, great. Um, and so we collected data on over 100 different saving products across Kenya. And one of the things that we were immediately struck by was the wide range of different financial institutions that were engaged in this space. So you have the traditional players like commercial banks, uh, like microfinance, microfinance institutions, state-owned banks, postal banks. Uh, but then you also increasingly see a lot of technology startups in this space, uh, insurance providers and asset management companies that are increasingly engaged in this space in driving competition uh, even to the bottom of the pyramid. Um, this is, as an example of this, these are three products that are targeting women in Kenya that are taken directly from the Spinnaker website and the data that we collected in Kenya. And the institutions cannot be more different. Uh, the first institution is Kenya Women Finance Trust. It's a microfinance institution that's based in Kenya. And one of the, one of the most interesting things about their product has to do with their pricing. So meaning that their pricing, uh, the minimum opening deposit of their account is zero. So you can start savings with as little as 10 Kenya shillings or 10 cents. Um, this compared to the Changa Manka maternity card, uh, Changa Monka Micro Health is a technology startup that is developing a smart card technology so women can build up sums of money towards maternal health goals like um, giving birth or something along those lines. And the third, the third institution that we have displayed here is INM Bank. And INM Bank uh, is really focused more on the advertising and dissemination efforts. They utilize a wide range from mobile messages to billboards to emails to market and create a value proposition with their customers. Um, I'm going to now jump to, as Billy Jack touched upon, uh, I would be remiss without talking a little bit about how technology has completely or relatively completely transformed the delivery and access to uh, financial services in Kenya. And Right now, I've looked at, in the past four years, uh, three different um, access points. Microfinance branches, uh, commercial bank branches, and ATMs. But when you compare this to bank agents, so in 2010, um, the Central Bank of Kenya opened up regulation that allowed for agent banking. So pretty much, it allowed commercial banks to outsource certain financial activities um, to retail shops. So think um, grocery stores, think gas stations. And in one year, there's over 8,000 agent banks or banking agents that were spread out across Kenya. However, if you compare the bank agents to mobile money agents, again, you see this number is dwarfed. So there's a huge mobile money agent network that's grown across Kenya. And what's even really interesting, if you look at the first year of growth of bank agents compared to the first year growth of mobile money agents, the bank agents actually grew at a faster rate. During the research, uh, the Central Bank of Kenya also opened up um, regulatory methods, uh, regula regula regulatory, uh, excuse me, regulation around agent banking to microfinance institutions, and I think we're increasingly going to see a lot of movement in this space. And this, these trends in technology were also seen in our data. 75% of the institutions we say, we surveyed offered one or more of their of one or more of their saving products via mo a mobile phone. Um, the third really interesting data story that we saw was involving commercial banks. Um, I'm gonna, this is a flow chart that tracks uh, each one of these circles represent a different commercial bank in Kenya. And the, the size of the dot corresponds to the volume of deposits. So as the volume of deposits grow, the dot of each of these banks will grow. Um, and as you can see, there's a handful of different players that are really successful in uh, mobilizing volume of deposits. Uh, Kenya Commercial Bank is a, is a pioneer in this space, Equity Bank, um, and also Cooperative Bank of Kenya. Um, 
I think even more interesting is when you take a look at um, the number of deposit accounts. So these are the same commercial banks, in the, in, except for this time, the dot corresponds to the number of deposit accounts at each one of these institutions. And what you see is one institution, Equity Bank, really pioneering and having, being successful in this space. Um, and then towards in the more recent years, you also see uh, Kenya Commercial Bank mobilizing a lot of deposits accounts as well. Um, if you take a closer look at this data, it, really, it tells a really interesting story. And um, in the past, since 2006, Equity Bank has, has um, created over 4.4 new deposit accounts. 97% of these have a volume of deposits below 100,000 Kenya shillings, the equivalent of 1,000 US dollars. Uh, Kenya Commercial Bank tells a similar story. The, um, the majority of these accounts are below 100,000 $100, shillings, excuse me. And if you look at the social mandate and the mission statement of these two, of Equity Bank and KCB, you'll see a, you'll see a different story. Um, Equity Bank has a social mandate at its heart, inclusive customer-focused financial services that socially and economically empower clients. Kenya Commercial Bank, it doesn't mention anything about, it doesn't incorporate or integrate a social mandate into um, its mission statement. It's called, it says, to be, the third, to be the preferred financial solutions provider in Africa with a global reach by 2013. So these were three, re these were three uh, interesting and unique insights to the Kenya context, but we invite you to explore all the data that we've made publicly available on the Spinnaker website um, and compare and visualize and come up with your own data stories. Thank you so much.